In the opening scene, we are introduced to the protagonist, Anita Needy, who is placed in a mental asylum. It appears that she is a dangerous patient, which becomes even more evident when she attacks a nurse without any reason. Anita is tossed into a dark cell as punishment, and during her time there, she recounts all the events of her past life. The story then shifts to a flashback, taking us to Devil's Kettle, a small town named after a mysterious waterfall. For some reason, the water flows into a deep hole and never comes out. No one knows where it goes, and even scientists are baffled by this phenomenon. Anita then tells us about her best friend, Jennifer, a popular and attractive cheerleader at their college, unlike herself. Despite having very little things in common, the two enjoy each other's company. Anita also has a boyfriend named Chip, but she holds a stronger affection for her best friend than for her romantic partner. <laughs> Sorry, Chip. On a particular evening, Jennifer invites Anita to a local dive bar where an indie rock band named Low Shoulder is going to perform. Upon their arrival, Jennifer gets drawn to the lead performer, Nicholas. So, she approaches him. The two then chat for a while, and Jennifer is sent to get some drinks. While she is away, Nicholas approaches his bandmates and discusses Jennifer's virginity, saying she will be perfect for their project, their indie rock concept album. Anita, who overhears their conversation, feels weird and later shares it with her best friend. However, Jennifer doesn't pay much attention to it. Soon after, the band starts their performance and everyone begins to enjoy themselves. However, a sudden electrical short circuit causes a fire that rapidly spreads throughout the bar. Chaos ensues as people scramble to save their lives. Amidst the commotion, the two friends manage to escape through a bathroom window. Surprisingly, the band members are already outside, acting in a relaxed manner as if nothing happened. They talk for a while, and out of the blue, Nicholas asks Jennifer to join them. The whole thing creeps Anita out, but Jennifer agrees without any hesitation. She even ignores her best friend and gets into the guy's van. After they drive away, Anita returns home and immediately contacts her boyfriend, sharing all the details of the incident with him. In the middle of their conversation, Anita is startled by the sound of the doorbell, intensifying her fear. She slowly proceeds downstairs and opens the door, but discovers nobody outside. With a sense of unease, she returns to her room, but then hears noises coming from the kitchen. Anita goes to investigate the source, only to find Jennifer completely covered in blood. To make matters more creepy, she lets out an evil smirk. Jennifer then opens the fridge and starts to devour raw chicken. Just then, she screams at the top of her lungs and vomits a trail of dark fluid. It appears as if she has been possessed by some sort of devilry. Either that, or she's had one too many white claws. The whole scenario is too much for Anita to handle, so she attempts to call for help, but Jennifer quickly pins her against the wall. She then prepares to bite Anita's neck, but something takes over her and she suddenly runs away from there. The following morning at school, Anita appears disturbed, unable to shake off the events of the previous night. She also worries about her best friend, but much to her surprise, Jennifer appears in a completely fine state and dismisses Anita's concerns. Shortly after, their professor offers condolences condolences for those who lost their lives in the bar incident from the previous night. Everyone is saddened by the news, but Jennifer remains indifferent and even mocks the situation. Confused, Anita wonders what is wrong with her best friend. She knows that her behavior has something to do with the low shoulder band. Later, Anita seeks out Chip and tells him everything about Jennifer, including her evil appearance from the other day. Sounds like she just had one too many white claws, babe. On the other hand, Jennifer approaches the college football team captain Jonas, who is grieving the loss loss of his best friend. Apparently, he also died in the fire incident. With words of comfort, Jennifer leads him to the forest located behind their college. Once there, she begins to seduce him, and she does a really good job. And at the same time, several birds and <laughs> animals mysteriously start surrounding them. Just as Jonas is about to inquire further, Jennifer transforms into her evil form and brutally disembowels him to death. His chilling screams are heard by a college professor who rushes to the scene and finds his mutilated corpse. This is exactly what I would look like after Megan Fox had her way with me. Later in the evening, Anita and Jennifer engage in a phone conversation. Anita remains haunted by the incident, but Jennifer urges her to move on, emphasizing that life is too short for these things. In the midst of their conversation, Jennifer deliberately burns her own tongue with a lighter, yet she remains unharmed. Just then, Anita is called by her boyfriend, who shockingly informs her about Jonas's murder, making her even more worried. 
Meanwhile, Low Shoulder gains a lot of popularity due to the false rumors that they saved a bunch of people during that fire. Hundreds and thousands of people start requesting them for a concert, and a charity appearance at the local school is finally confirmed. Not bad for a band that named themselves after a move that Machop gets at level 7. Following this, the movie cuts to one month later. The locals, including Anita, are finally able to smile again and move on from the tragic incident. However, Jennifer appears lethargic, weary, and unwell. One day, after class, she and Anita are walking down the hallway when a classmate named Colin asks her out on a date. Surprisingly, Jennifer accepts the invitation and texts him her address, inviting him to her place. But he's about to get sucked dry. Later that night, Colin eagerly drives to the location provided by Jennifer, while Anita and Chip spend intimate time together. Upon arriving at the destination, Colin realizes that the area is deserted and the house is still under construction. It's sketchy, but this is the arbiter of MG K's seed we're talking about, so he enters the house anyway and encounters Jennifer, who momentarily startles him from behind. Without wasting any time, she begins to seduce and kiss him. For the first few minutes, everything goes as normal, and the poor boy has a wonderful time. But then, he notices a disturbing change in Jennifer's eye. Colin tries to run away from there, but the evil girl once again transforms into her monstrous self and mercilessly kills him. She even drinks his blood in a sadistic manner. Guess she's getting married to him. Meanwhile, Anita, who is in the middle of romance, suddenly starts hallucinating. She sees Jonas' spirit on the couch and blood dripping from the ceiling. This unsettling experience terrifies her, leading her to abruptly leave Chip's place and drive away. However, it is not the end of her worries, as she almost runs over Jennifer, who is drenched in blood. Filled with panic, Anita rushes back home and locks herself in her bedroom. Attempting to calm her disturbed mind, she lies down in bed. However, to her dismay, she finds Jennifer present in her room, appearing normal once again. This perplexes Anita, leaving her unsure of what is happening. And before she can even react, Jennifer unexpectedly kisses her on the lips, intending to help her relax. Oh man. Following these events, Jennifer reveals a shocking truth. Low Shoulder, the band from the bar fire incident, had taken her to the same mysterious waterfall and offered her as a virgin sacrifice to Satan in exchange for their fame and fortune. She further claims that despite the success of the sacrifice, she did not die because she was not truly a virgin. This mishap also ensured that the band stayed crap. However, Jennifer explains that she never became normal because she was permanently possessed by Satan. After the incident, she remembers waking up unharmed, even after being stabbed by the band members several times. Jennifer then reveals that as she made her way back home, she felt extremely hungry. So she devoured her first victim, a foreign exchange student who is believed to have died in the fire. After explaining all this, Jennifer mentions something even more shocking. On that fateful night, she planned to eat Anita as well. But at the last second, she had a change of heart, as she still had feelings for her best friend. Jennifer goes on to explain that after feeding, she exerts extra strength and can endure virtually any injury without experiencing pain. To demonstrate this, she deliberately cuts her hand and makes a large wound, but it heals itself in just a matter of seconds. Overwhelmed by the horrifying revelations, Anita asks Jennifer to leave. The latter complies and jumps from the second floor window, which is about 13 feet off the Ground. In the next scene, Anita begins to conduct paranormal research so that she can learn more about the unsettling events as of late. For this, she goes into the cult section of her college library and starts reading books about occult and virgin sacrifices to Satans. After a lot of research, she finally learns that her best friend is actually a succubus. We already knew that. A supernatural being that feeds on flesh. These beings can only be killed when they are hungry and weak. Following this, Anita shares her findings with her boyfriend Chip, hoping for understanding and support. Unfortunately, he dismisses her claims and suggests that she may need mental assistance. As the two continue chatting, a sudden realization hits Anita, prompting her to break up with her boyfriend. The reason is simple. She knows that being close to him can potentially endanger his life. Also, he's a douchebag. That's not all. Anita even forbids him from attending the upcoming college program. However, Chip angrily disregards her warnings and walks away. On the day of the college program, Anita anxiously awaits Jennifer's arrival. 
determined to keep a watchful eye on her. Meanwhile, Jennifer intercepts Chip, who is on his way to attend the program. She cunningly makes up a story, saying that Anita was having an affair with Colin. After this, she leads him to an abandoned pool, using the same seductive tactics she had used to kill her previous victims. They're super effective on Chip. Back at the program, Anita grows increasingly concerned when Jennifer does not arrive for a long while. When she can't take it any longer, she rushes to Chip's house to check on him. But learns that he has already departed for the program. Worried that something bad has happened, Anita starts looking around the area and eventually reaches the abandoned pool where she sees Jennifer eat her boyfriend alive. Hot. Alarmed, Anita jumps into the pool without thinking twice and starts battling her best friend. She uses pepper spray on Jennifer, but this only angers the latter. Jennifer, with vengeance in her eyes, closes in on Anita, preparing to land the final blow. But a wounded ship summons the last of his strength and impales Jennifer with a pool skimmer. This causes her to lose a lot of blood, making her weak. She then retreats from the scene, realizing that she is vulnerable now. Following this, Anita rushes to her beloved ship and cradles him in her arms. The two have a heart-touching conversation before he closes his eyes and passes away. Anita, who is now heartbroken and filled with rage, prepares herself for a path of vengeance. In the middle of the night, she breaks into Jennifer's bedroom through a window and starts attacking her. A fierce fight ensues between the two, but Jennifer gains the upper hand by sinking her teeth into Anita's shoulder, her low shoulder. Despite this, our protagonist doesn't stop, and she keeps on fighting with all she has got. At one point, she manages to rip a BFF necklace from Jennifer's neck, prompting her to momentarily stop fighting. Taking full advantage of this opportunity, Anita plunges a utility knife into Jennifer's heart, finally killing her once and for all. Moments later, when Jennifer's mom arrives at the room, she is horrified to discover Anita atop her lifeless daughter's body. This is the reason why Anita ended up in the mental asylum. It is also revealed that she has inherited some of Jennifer's supernatural powers because of the bite on her shoulder. In the final scene, Anita uses her satanic abilities and escapes the mental facility. She then hitchhikes a ride, claiming she is following a band. In the credit scene, home videos and crime scene photos reveal that Anita has exacted revenge by murdering all of the members of Low Shoulder in their hotel room. As if those idiots could afford a hotel room. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.